Alrighty then, good afternoon all you fantastic people, uh, Silver Dragon here, coming at you with some of the dwarves, which I uh, took a little bit of a look at through its, uh, well I guess I should say beta rather than early access stage, but still. And uh, it has now fully released, uh, actually what was it, uh, three days ago, unfortunately I hadn't had the time uh, recently to check it out again, but let's go ahead and dive straight on in. And, uh, see how things, well, we already know how things have progressed, but hey, let's just try it out once more, pretty much. Heroes can be injured! So don't let Fracas them. Fracas made us from stone to protect Fracas. the guard. Mightiest of dwarves. Against orcs, ogres, and all the other beasts of Teon. This is also a book series we I should mention, and I definitely suggest you read it. It's fantastic. We are the children of the Divine Smith. We are the Dwarves. Boom. But yes, this is uh, actually a really, really good book series. I had uh, reread it not too long ago, and it was as enjoyable as I remembered. <laughs> and it actually follows the uh, book fairly well. I mean, it's not perfect, uh, but still. All right, pause the game at any time and move the camera. Use the minimal button. Yep. On the way. Gun leap attack. We'll press E. Yes, yeah, so we'll press E. Boom. Right. And actually, this will affect allies. Your attacks Understood. will also affect allies. You got to be very careful there. Charge. Ha! Boom. Kick his ass. Yeah, you can finish him off. All right. Let's see if I can get a charge in here. Uh, charge. Every special ability costs action points. The blue points below your bar, you earn them over time and for kills. On the way. Oh, I'm actually stunned here a little bit. Uh -oh. Not possible right now. Let's see if I can. Right. Oh, I'm kind of stuck here. I need to get a kill here. Boom! There's a good hit. Let's see if I can finish him off. Get one more. Oh, Come there's here, a good you. hit. Charge. Defend, laddies. Oh, one of our dwarves is down. Right. Come here, you. Ha. Boom! On the way. Let's get him from behind. Just a moment. I need one All more right. action point. Ha. There's Understood. two kills. That should regenerate some points. Of course, I'm surrounded now, which isn't a very good thing. But hey. On the way. There we go. Knock them back a little bit. Glandling, a present from the workshop. Ooh, I like presents. Ooh, grenades. Now I should get out of here. On the way. I can. Understood. Hope, hoping I don't have to charge right. out of there. Ah, Come on. I'd be happy to pass on this present to the Greenskins. Lovely. Let's do so. On the way. All right. Boom! Oh, good hits. Good hits. I can't really make it through the line here, though. It's just kind of annoying. Stay dead. Okay. Let's get in here. There we go. That's the kind of damage I want to see getting done here. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Must add more orc corpses to the wall. Come here, you! Ooh, yeah, this wasn't progressing too well. They just kept sending more reinforcements in. It twitched. Kill it. My king! What are you doing here? Gizelbert I and I, the father of the Fifthling clan, it also has kind of not plays been on the book. front line of battle against the creatures of Teon for many cycles. The king surveys the battlefield and the defenders with a grave expression. <sighs> we are too few. This you know as well as he does. But there will be no reinforcements arriving. Hundreds of brave warriors lie inside the fortress dying. The illness is running rampant. It brings weakness 
and death. Stay at your posts. Be as steadfast as the granite of which we are made. Nothing that can break us. us Vrakas is with us. Oh, Vrakas! And now I can control the king. And you do want to switch between them. Now, he has a couple of abilities. Now, again, these do affect allies, so we need to be very, very careful when using them. So we have Cleave, a uh, lateral blow, dealing uh, damage to several enemies, which is actually a really, really good ability. You can knock them sideways. You can potentially use that to knock them off the edge here, I believe. We got the King's Hammer, hits the ground and stuns nearby enemies. And Fovrakas motivates himself and nearby heroes to fight quicker for a short time. All right. It will be so. Boom! Like that. That's not yet possible. Another one gone. <laughs> Sweep them more off the edge. Oh shit! Come on, me king. It will be so. Over there. Boom! I need to see if I can at least switch to blind lane and use his abilities. Excellent. Come on, big guy down. Oh, he just actually took down an ally. Where's the king? There's the king. Hail to the king. There we go. There we go. Buffed him. Woo! Take it to him! Death to the cream skins! On my way. Whack! Oh, and there oh, goes a bunch of them! I Go, King! And golfing! Love it! For fracas! Let's see about throwing this over here. What? There we go. Another one gone. <laughs> Whack. Off with Goodbye. You. Now yes. switch to you. And let's actually, after that, we'll get you into this fight. Boom! There we go. Not only did we knock a bunch what? of the wankers down, but we also got them uh, up here, right here. Let's also buff our guys here. Excellent, excellent. Things are progressing very well here. Whack! Switch over, actually. And throw a grenade in here. And jump you over. Oh shit, no! Okay, that would have been bad. Thank God he couldn't actually get you know, launched off there. He would have been screwed. Okay, everybody fight harder. Boom! Love it. Let's give him the hammer. Bring down the hammer! Oh, that was brutal. Love it. Need more like that. Let's see here. Okay. Yes! There we go. I need to get what? the king in there. Okay. Time. Indeed. Bring down the hammer. Post haste, actually. We ain't got all day here. Another one gone. <laughs> Come here and die. Come on. Huh? There we go. Let's see if you can help me here. We're having issues taking this thing down. Yes, for fracas. Over there. Come here and die. Let's see if I can get him out of here. Be off with you. Kill him up. For fracas. Emma. Okay, so this is almost entirely controlled with the mouse here for the most part. Very similar to a lot of uh, ARPGs. 
These are the ones who attacked us in the tunnels. Uh -oh. We suffered great losses beating them back. The Alpha. Come here and I'll split you like a straw, you treacherous elf. In his fury, the old king radiates a ferocious power that none of Sitalia's children could withstand. But the slight, willowy being sitting astride the Shadow Mare the just grins down mockingly. You are mistaken. We are Alpha. We are here to destroy the elves. All peace-loving beings here in Girdlegard are under our protection, and you cannot open the gate that has barred your path into Girdlegard since the creation of the world. Not us, but perhaps one of your kind. This cannot be. Silence, you fool! Vrakas, forgive me for what I am about to do. Quickly! In formation! You must hold them back until I close the gate! <laughs> Not that it matters much, but hey, let's do it! Ah, crap, what I used up most it? of my grenades. Ha! Ha! Boom! Do what I can here. Good men, defend to the last. All right. ha! Take down the heavily armored guys. Ha! Good hits, good hits. Uh, we got more coming, I think. On the way, charge! Let's see if I can do a finisher on this guy. Ha! All right, or something. And again. On the way. Okay, let's get back here and finish these guys off. And stay dead. It's like stunning them definitely helps, but All right. Attack! Understood. I like how he's sliding there. That was a hilarious little glitch. Come here, you. <laughs> yeah, even as he's moving forward, he isn't actually seemingly moving his feet very much. He's just kind of gliding around, which is a shame. Should almost like permanently seal the gate there, but too bad it's not gonna. Oh, shank through the back. Ouch. Are you wild, the alpha bastard? Look at me. I am Syntharas, the reaper of your death. I will take your life, and the land will take your soul. Get out of my sight, pointy ears. And let me delight at the closed gate a little longer. The gate may have closed, but when you rise again from the dead by the power of the land, you will be one of us, and you will open it. Never! My soul belongs to Brakas. No. Your soul now belongs to the land, and henceforth you will belong to it forever. Now die and return. Then, hand us Girdlegard. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Victory and defeat. Quite. It's reach all over again. There was no winning that one. Over a thousand years later. Well, not quite. Still. Anyway. You're a perfectionist, Tungdale Bolifar. Just a little bit. I've got a reputation to uphold. If you can't rely on the metalwork of a dwarf, what can you rely on? Mm-hmm. You look dreadful, bad knight. You look dreadful. What a charmer. The maid gives you an ironic, reprimanding scowl. Ikana has been crying half the night. <laughs> when you were teething, I carried you around the vaults. You played with my beard and I sang you to sleep. Oh, smiles. She's heard this story many times before. That was 23 cycles ago. I'm quite sure you didn't sing. You might have grumbled a bit. <laughs> if what you've read about the dwarven lifespan uh, is true, it'll be another 300 sun cycles and more before you are called to the Eternal Forge. The certainty of one day having to witness Frala's death already burdens your heart. <laughs> what can I do for you? What can I do for you? For me, nothing. 
It's Lot Yonan. He wants to see you in his study. Woo! In your mind, you go through all the recent incidents that might have annoyed the Magus. <laughs> Apart from a few little squabbles with his famuli, nothing worth mentioning happened since the incident with your beard. You nod. Okay. You better not keep the Magus waiting. Nope. Keep See the Magus you later. Waiting. There's goulash for dinner. Ooh, goulash. Fantastic. Of course, we have the. Uh... This is where you swung the forge hammer for the first time, thirty cycles ago. No one taught Ooh, you the craft. In my inventory. Sweet. It was enough for you to watch Lot Yonan's old smith at work. Whenever the workshop was empty, you practiced and quickly mastered the craft with ease. You're a dwarf, I hope so. All right, let's open up my inventory and see what I got here. So I have 10 gold, I have Frolla's amulet, and some provisions. Oh, that's the one I actually forged for her, yes. And of course, I have the exact same thing, uh, ability that the previous guy had had, uh, the blacksmith's blow. So it's basically the exact same thing. Mighty blow, deals lots of damage, and a few of them get knocked back. And if his health drops below 30, he gains a bonus to armor. Nothing too crazy. Oh, leather cloth. Oh. Got me axe. <laughs> hmm. Indeed. Let's take a look at the altar to Varrakis and other things that we have in here. Everything you Consume know right about on dwarves in. you learnt from books. The Divine Smith created the Dwarves, and from time to time, you make him an offering of some crumbs of gold. It's the most valuable thing you have to offer Vrakus. Hail, Dwarven God! You've worked a bit more on Sunya's birthday present last night. The little one is crazy about horses. You, on the other hand, prefer to keep <laughs> your distance, unless you're fitting them with hooves. Too many legs, and way too big. Oh, dwarves. There ain't no dwarven cavalry, that's for damn sure. Which hey, is a good thing. Groundling, come to the kitchen, we need you. Jollison, a fourth degree famulus and your favorite foe among the students of magic, gives you a disparaging glance and disappears without waiting for your reply. Pug! Tangdale! Quick! Or the goulash will get burnt! You immediately recognize what the problem is. A chain running over a pulley for positioning the cauldron is detached from its mounting and the cauldron much. stuck in the fireplace. It's a heavy load and none of the famuli, who feel superior even during kitchen duty, dare do anything. They might burn their fingers or even get a bit dirty. Oh, Lord. Let's see here. Repair the melting bracket. It'll be a waste of goulash. And I'm hungry. Here, hold this. <laughs> Let's see. Talk Do you remember to... when you dyed my beard with some magic spell? I had to shave it off. You stroke your beard, which is unusually short for a dwarf. Damn it! Ah, oh, it's heavy! The young human forces through his pursed lips, letting the pot sink a little. Don't you dare ruin my goulash, boy! The cook with beefy forearms glares at the young man, <laughs> and after a brief moment, he tries harder. With as much concern in your voice as you can muster, you say, Oh, no, no, this doesn't look good. You're pleased to notice he's dripping with sweat. <laughs> Get you back for this, groundling! Uh huh. And there you, you go. Damned freak! For a moment, you hope the Famulus really does raise his hand to you. But then he comes to his senses and leaves the kitchen, his face bright red. <laughs> what a pair you are! Why, thank you, we try. Do you know what Lord Yonan wants? The maid gives you an amused look. She has often accused you of making things more complicated than necessary. Mm. Well then. Vegetables, bread, cheese. But the cook is not to be trifled uh. with. Many painful knuckles have taught you that she knows how to handle her heavy wooden spoon. And that she may possibly have eyes in the back of her head. We should examine this in more detail. But not now. 
Oh, there's the youngin. Oh. I am your godfather, little one. Oh. I'll look after you just like I looked after your mother. Little Akana grasps your calloused finger oh. and smiles at you wide-eyed. Adorable. All right, moving on. All right, let's go see the boss. Of the 200 or so people selected to learn the art of magic under Lot Yonan, there's barely a handful of them you can stand the sight of. You're not at all interested in magic in all its elusiveness and whimsy. Your realm is the forge. Indeed, in the might of the hammer and the swing. To the master's study! Select characters directly by pressing the 1 through 4 keys. With the tab key, switch between to the next character. Indeed, and you really do need to switch between them a lot. Like, the combat gets ridiculous here, so you Master really need to be very, very Father careful. told me you wish to speak with me. Ah, Tungdil, come in. Uh, there is a bag over there in the cupboard. Take it out, please. It yes, contains sir. artifacts belonging to my former familus, Goren. I wish to return them to him. He's in Black Saddle, 300 miles away. 300 miles? That's a long journey. Who are you going to entrust with this? I was thinking of you. Me? There is no one better to take on this journey. You have acquired much knowledge. You are almost a scholar. You know more mm. than most family about Girdle Guard and its inhabitants. It is time for you to go out into the world and see it with your own eyes. Woo! I I'm excited. With pleasure. Let's see. What's in the pouch? What's in the bag? Magical devices. Uh, you better leave the bag closed if you want to avoid any accidents. Dwarves don't really like magic, and <laughs> magic doesn't like you either. <laughs> Rakus gave us so much craftsmanship that there's no space left in our bodies for magic. Strictly speaking, every time you've been too close to magic, it has ended in catastrophe. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll meet other dwarves on the way. Perhaps I'll meet some dwarves on my travels. Yes, perhaps. But don't hold out too much hope. And be careful who you talk to. Not everyone out there likes dwarves. Yeah, goblins. They abduct baby dwarves and sell them to magi, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. Not the best bit of business I've ever done. But what was I to do? The long noses threatened to throw you into the nearest river. I'll set off soon. Be on your guard. Look after the bag and don't lose it. May Palandiel be with you. And Varakas too, of course. Of course! I'll off immediately. I'll see you soon, Lot Yonan. Ah. Oh. Closer the friendship between two characters is, the higher the chance of the friend getting AP when you kill something. I guess that was what that was saying. Okay, what do we got? Got some gold. And of course, the item in, in question. Pardon me. So we have day one, current rations, the amount of gold we have. I need to actually chat with her over here in a second. Go for some food. Hey, what are you... We're still eating here. Why don't you go and get your... Fine. Uh, let's go chat with her. Hello, Frala. Hmm? I need provisions for 300 miles. But first, a present. I've got a present for you. You take out a symbol of protection that you've carefully made from three horseshoe nails. It's not the finest jewelry in Girdle Guard. Uh. One look at Frala's face makes it clear that it doesn't matter. She glows with happiness as she takes the pendant. For me? But why? Hm? Because you don't see me as an oddity, and you're like a little sister to me. You could have said. But you settle with a shrug and a crooked uh, smile. I need provisions for 300 miles. You're grinning from ear to ear. Finally, you've got the chance to see something of the world. Oh, lovely. 300? Tungdil, that's no errand. That's an epic journey. Woo! Wait, I've got just the right thing. But make sure the cook doesn't see... I'm going Let's. to Black Saddle to return a few things to a former apprentice in the Magus. You pocket the rye bread, sausages, and ham. Enough food for the first few days of your journey. Mm. 
Let's go with the dwarves. Perhaps I'll even meet some dwarves on the way. Frala throws you a cautious glance. It's a tricky subject that you can't help but broach. There aren't dwarves down here. You're the only one in Idda's Lane, as far as we know. Hm. I know, but I can't just have been born out of a rock. Somewhere in the mountains, I... Yes. Hm. Maybe. Ah, uh, Edo Slane. I reminded you more than once that Lot Yonan wrote to the dwarf clans, and none of them were missing a dwarf boy. Someone please adopt me. I've got a long journey ahead of me. <laughs> Indeed. Well, I wish you the blessing of Palandiel and Vrakas to protect you from all danger on your journey. Here, a talisman. Whenever you look at it, think of me. <laughs> Frala winks at you mischievously. And of getting me a nice present. Oh, well then. Very well. But of course, but of course. Let's take a look. Now, I can actually equip this one, I think. For all of Scarf. Brings good fortune to the wearer. I'm actually not sure if I can... Nope, can't do it right now. Can't do anything with that. Ooh, let's actually take a look at the beer. The beer, the beer that is delivered to the vaults is supposed to be the best beer in Iddersland. It's certainly your favorite beer. But you haven't drunk enough other beers to truly know. Hmm. That's a shame. What do we have down here? Characters, group, inventory, quest log, and of course main menu. Which is what we've already been looking at. Log, as always, yada yada yada. So what else do we have here? Oh, the rucksack and Lot Leonin. Yep. Alright, let's bounce. Time to head out. Alright, I think this first episode I'll keep it about... Well, we'll keep it about 30 minutes, give or take here, so... We'll try and keep things as compact as possible. Knowing me, though, we'll see what happens about that. Oh, I'll probably have quite a few 40 and 50 minute ones. Oh. More story. How nice to see you again, Lot Yonan. Uh, it must have been an age since we last met face to face. Nudin, welcome. Please, sit down. No, thank you, my friend. These are urgent matters, and I don't have much time. You must come to Leos Nudin immediately. The perished land is stirring. Are you sure? What makes you think that? I found out about 60 orbits ago, during a visit to the borders. Our magical barriers have weakened and become <laughs> porous. The Elfa have left their land, and a huge horde of orcs have marched into Girdelgard. Were you able to strengthen the spell with your magic? No. I can't repair the damage alone. We need the combined power of the six. The other four are already on their way here, but we need your help, too. I will set off for Parista without delay. Oh, and um, as you're coming, could you also take the opportunity to bring back the things that I lent to you? Of course. I have them already packed in a bag. Oh, thank you. We'll be expecting you. Well then. Well then, indeed. Now, of course, if you've seen my previous video, we already know what happens here, but hey. We'll just go in with a hint of, oh, what's going on here? Utterly blinded by the sunlight, you yes, squeeze my your eyes. eyes tightly shut after only my a few steps. Eyes. The time spent underground has made you so sensitive to light that you're forced to seek shelter in the shade of a mighty oak. Next. You reach Edo a small slain. lake by a birchwood. Your feet hurt and your eyes still sting in the unaccustomed sunlight. But a smile spreads across your face nonetheless. You've covered a decent distance on the first day of your big journey. Well. You pitch your camp and lie down to sleep on the hard forest floor. When you awake in the morning, your legs are stiff and achy. Hmm. Trying not to feel sorry for yourself, you throw your rucksack over your shoulder. You're a dwarf, and dwarves don't complain. Well, you know, bad beer, I'm sure they would, but hey. Right or left, right or left. Let's go right. Around midday, with the sun high in the sky and the first beads of sweat appearing on your forehead, you see something move next to the road 
a few hundred meters ahead. Here we go. Some crows are pecking at something in the long grass. Let's see. Walk further along the road so you can sneak out some more. Yeah, I'll just walk further. When you see the blood on the ground, you try to convince yourself it's from an animal that just happened to be killed on the road by a hunter. You know this is improbable, and your hope disappears completely when you see two human bodies lying in the flattened grass. Dun dun dun. All a right. slender man lies in front of you, dressed in an expensive robe. It is in the colors of Turgur the Fair-Faced, one of the six Magi. The dead man must be one of Turgur's famuli. You don't see any wounds. Now this is where things start to get a little bit different from the actual uh, book here, because you actually, in the book, he actually meets I've them in the this. village up there ahead are some before they are the killed. So yeah. The cuts are too big to have been made by arrows, but too small for sword wounds. So there is some difference between them. You don't see any signs of a struggle in the area where the corpses are lying. Were they stabbed by a companion? A stranger could hardly have crept up on them with such sparse cover. Let's examine the bush. Hmm. Nothing. All right. Examine this bush. Nothing again. You halt. There is something. A rucksack. Did someone hide it in the bushes, or was it thrown in there? Search the room. You open the rucksack and recognize that someone has already rummaged through it. As well as some implements and writing utensils, you find a pouch full of gold and a talisman. The gold is proof that this is not a case of robbery. Might as well take it. Warmth and a feeling of security flush through your body as you touch the talisman. You feel safer just holding it in your hand. I'm taking you with me. There we go. Ain't gonna be doing them no good no more. No, sir. You look down on a tall, broadly built man. He's wearing dark brown leather armor that is strengthened with iron plates. There's a sword lying next to him. Was he trying to defend himself against something or someone? There is no blood on the sword. Fail! The man has the same incisions. It's clear that both men were killed by the same weapon. But what that weapon might be, you cannot say. All right. A rucksack Next. that probably belonged to one of the dead. It seems to have been searched and then thrown away carelessly. Search. You find a few implements, some provisions, and a map. A route is drawn on it from Parista, Nudin's capital, to Lot Yonan's vaults. Hmm. Does this mean that Turga the Fair-Faced is in Parista and wanted to send Lot Yonan a message? And if so, why didn't he use magic? Did he want to contact him without anyone noticing? Why all this secrecy? Indeed. All right, now last time I think there was something here I missed. But I really don't see anything else. So I'm not really sure what it could be. Yeah, as far as I can see, there's not really anything else here. Yeah, no other question marks, no nothing. Let's proceed. You scour the area once more, and... Bury the dead and continue the journey. And onward! It's time-consuming and strenuous work digging shallow graves in the ground with a stick and covering the corpses with a few stones. But it should at least keep the crows from their feasting for a while. 
You continue on your way so as to put a few more miles between you and your grisly find before night falls. Yeah. Alright, we'll probably be ending it after this bit right here. You see a flickering light through the trees some way from the path. It might come from a campfire. Approach the fire audibly so you don't frighten anyone. You walk towards the fire with confident strides until you finally make out three broad-shouldered men with axes. Two rabbits are sizzling over the fire. The men are joking with one another, but you can only understand the odd word. They haven't noticed you yet. Mm. Ah, let's approach the men and talk to them. Once you reach the edge of the firelight, you say amicably, Greetings. My name is... The men mm. jump up and grab their axe. Well, I'll there. be. Is that a grandly? The men look you over, suspicious. Hmm. Traveler would have nothing against a warm fire and some company. My name is Tongdil. I'm only a traveler who would have nothing against a warm fire and some company. <laughs> a groundling wants our company. We are honest, hard-working men. Why would we have anything to do with groundlings? Be off with you. The man strengthens his grip on the axe and passes his tongue over his yellow teeth while keeping you in his sights. All right. You shrug your shoulders indifferently and take three small steps backwards without taking your eyes off the men. All right. If I'm not welcome here, then I'll go. Good. And don't even think about coming back to stab us in the back or steal from us. I'm an old thief, so they don't murder. I just want to see why there was a fire burning. Your heart is pounding and you confront the man a little more courageously than you feel. I'm no thief and I'm certainly no murderer. I... All grandlings are... You find it difficult to take control of your voice again. Have you met many dwarves? Enough to know that you're all good. Uh. Hmm. Now consider this. I am a dwarf with an axe. And I don't use my axe for cutting down trees. The men are visibly unsettled and lower their axes a little. Exactly. I thought so. You turn your back on the men and walk back to the path confidently. You don't hear any steps behind you. And only once you've put distance between you do you dare look back over your shoulder. Hmm. None of the men have followed you. Hairy situation. You sigh with relief. It could have ended up a very painful experience if you'd provoked the men or shown them any weak. Well, shit. All right. We're actually one away from... I thought it was actually right near the city here. Well, we'll move forward one. You reach the banks of the water and can see Axeldale on the other side. But there isn't a bridge for far and wide. The fishermen's boats glide over the water, which sparkles in the sun. None of the men seem to notice you while they throw out their nets. That's a shame. Uh, let's ask him to take through across the river. You call to the nearest fisherman. He looks across at you briefly before turning away and getting back to his work. All right. Let's view the Siri for a while. At the cold, dark water. The current seems so strong that they could carry off even the most experienced of swimmers. And you aren't even a mediocre one. <laughs> you once read a legend in a book. Elria, the goddess of water, did not like the children of the forge and cursed the dwarves so that they would drown in any waters beyond their kingdoms. The main reason that dwarves avoid water to this day. <laughs> you leave the peaceful banks of the river behind you and continue on your excellent so i guess we'll have to continue down and then get off to the left here but i think we're already almost 40 minutes in here so i think i'm going to call this there for now and then we will continue this here a little bit later let me see if i can 
Yeah, that's not quite how I wanted to tilt my camera, but anyway, you can see we have quite a bit of ways to go here. There's Black Saddles right over there. There's actually an interesting story about that, which I'm not sure if we'll be covering uh, in the game, but I hope we do. I hope we do. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Have yourselves a great one, and I will see you all here uh, in the next episode. Till then.